good day and welcome to our fourth Sunday in Lent as we gather together in meditation to lift up the good news of our faith in Jesus Christ, a faith that has hope and well-being and healing. I'm glad you're with me this day as we look forward to the coming of spring in five days and to the coming of Easter early next month. I'm glad you're here. You can join together in celebration and worship and prayer. And I invite you now to share with me our call to worship for this day. Let us share together. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Give a joyous shout in honor of the rock of our salvation. Come before him with thankful hearts. Let us sing in psalms of praise. Come kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. The Lord is great beyond description and greatly to be praised. From Psalm 95. And as we gather this day, we share the greeting that Jesus did at his resurrection. We met Mary Magdalene, who is there to mourn. And he came to her and said a simple word in Hebrew, a word that means peace. Welcome, hello, how are you, well-being. That word is shalom, and I invite you now to share that shalom. Shalom in Christ, shalom. And may you be welcomed, have well-being, and experience peace in this coming week. And as we gather this day, we light a candle that reminds us the light of God in Christ shines for us and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. Amen. I invite you now to join with me also in our prayer preparation for this day. Let us pray together. When I survey the wondrous course on which the Prince of Glory died, my riches gain I count but loss, and pour contemption on all my pride. Dear Heavenly Father, I bow before you in adoration and praise. My heart is filled, my faith is renewed, and the presence of joy and love are all around me. You have been good to me all my days, and I thank you. Through the valley, the moment of my journey, goodness, mercy, grace surround me. I praise you and bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
The lesson this day, the scripture lesson, is from the gospel according to Luke chapter 22, verses 49 to 51. It is essentially the beginning of the passion narrative of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it says this, When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. May God add blessing to the reading of this word and bring blessings to those who hear this word and transform the written and spoken word into the living word in their hearts and minds and spirits. Amen. This passage is the beginning of, as I said, the passion story of Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion. At this point in Jesus' journey, he is in Jerusalem with his family, disciples, apostles, friends, to observe the Passover of the Jewish people. That is the Holy Friday story, Holy Thursday story, I'm sorry, of the narrative. And after it, he departs and goes to the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives to pray and to prepare for what is before him. He offers up a prayer to God, which we're all familiar with. Father, if it be your will, may this cup pass from me. He's expressing his humanity, but then says, not your, my will, but your will be done. And as he's kneeling there in prayer, the praetorium, the authorities, the police in Judea come to arrest him for blasphemy. His disciples ask, should we bring some weapons to defend ourselves? There's no response. What is interesting about this account in the Garden of Gethsemane, it appears in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it tells essentially the same account in some little variations. But what happens there is one of the disciples, apostles, acts out. The servant of the high priest is there with the authorities, and he strikes him, and according to the gospel, cuts off his ear. In John's gospel, it names the person who was attacked. The name was Malchus. And the attacker, Peter. So Peter strikes off the ear. Here is the great apostle doing this act of violence. Here is Jesus in a time of absolute crisis of what is before him. This is an account of the last miracle of Jesus before the time of passion, trial, crucifixion, death, the great miracle of resurrection. What's important in this story is what Jesus does in that moment of crisis. Understand how to say this. Jesus, throughout his ministry, no matter the circumstances, cared for other people. He had compassion. He had care. He had compassion for the widow of Nain who lost her child. He had compassion in healing the blind who could not see. When the disciples were in a struggling in a boat on a very rocky waters of the Sea of Galilee, he said to them, Fear not. Here I am. I will help you. One of the essences of all the miracles 
is not how, it's not what happened. It's Jesus' response to the situation with love, care, compassion, healing. Even in this moment of absolute crisis, Jesus takes care of someone who is injured. Someone who may have been even his enemy. He healed him. Doesn't say how it's done, but he was restored to health, to healing, hearing. And I think that's the message for us as we go forward to the great good news of resurrection. Are we a loving people, loving individuals? Do we show compassion to others even in the time of our own need? And care and concern for others, no matter who they are, even if they may be against us. Again, this is a simple story. The story of a person of Jesus seeking God's help to go through this moment of crisis. But in this moment of crisis, when one of the apostles acts out, he shows compassion to that the one who has been hurt. And I would suggest that's part of our witness, part of our journey in faith, that we can be a people who care, have compassion, to reach out our hands to others, to hold them in their crisis, and even in times our own crisis, our own concerns, our own worries, and we all go through them, that moment where we still can help someone else. We're a people of good news, a people of hope, compassion, love. As Paul has said in Romans, faith, hope, and love, these three, to have faith, trust, hope, expectation, but the greatest of these is love, compassion, care, and concern for ourselves, in our own journeys, and for others who may cross with us in our journeys, to be able to reach out and to say in the sense of Jesus, that, here I am, be not afraid, we can pass through this together. God bless you and keep you as we go forth on our journey to Easter. The great good news of our faith, Jesus lives, Jesus lives. Jesus lives and is alive for us. Have a great day. Have a wonderful week. I look forward to being with you next week. God bless you and keep you. Amen. As I lift up our prayer to God this day, I invite you to lift up your prayer to God for your concerns, your needs, for your thanksgiving, and for those you know who need a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, you who created each of us in your image, you who brought the light into being, and that light now can shine on us and warm us and shine in us, we ask that that light as it comes upon us can also be reflected from, from us to you, to others. Be with us this day. We ask for those who are in need, those in California particularly facing the floods that have occurred, to help them and guide them through that moment, to touch those who need a word of prayer for healing of body, mind, and spirit, for those who need a word of hope that they are not lost, but that your hands will hold them and guide them through. A word of faith to lift up to you, that indeed we believe. We believe in the journey of Jesus as he faced this crisis in time, that even in spite of the crisis, 
who is caring and compassionate to others, and that we are sharers and believers in the good news. He lives, he is risen, he is risen for us. And we can share that word this day that he spoke, shalom, peace, well-being. May we have that peace of mind, that well-being of spirit, and the hope that we can go forth daily with good news. Be with us this coming week, in this coming season, as we gather again to worship and celebrate the great good news of Jesus, that Jesus lives for us, has risen for us, and that the shalom of Jesus is always with us. Amen. I invite you now to share with me the pr prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I am glad you were with me this week. I look forward to being with you next week. Have a wonderful journey into spring and into spring into Easter. God be with you and God bless you and God keep you until we meet again. And I invite you now to share with me our benediction for this day. Sometimes it causes me to tremble. Were you there? Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.